And as we discussed, all of these are linked. So you can go back and forth from one to the other. If you have the SD, you can go back to the sum of squares as long as you know the sample size. If you have the sum of squares, you can get to the standard deviation as long as you know the sample size. So the only thing that you have as a missing link to go between these values is to make sure that you know what is the sample size, right? Or the population size. As long as you have that, you can pop back and forth between these all mathematically. So the standard deviation is useful because it's interpretable, but in, because it's so interpretable, it's often used as a measure of extremeness, right? In statistics, when scores get extreme, we call them significant because they are unlikely to occur by chance. And therefore, we infer that there must be something going on that makes that value so different. So standard deviation we'll learn more about in when we talk about normal distributions. We'll use standard deviations a lot. Every normal distribution can be characterized simply by two things. A normal distribution is normally distributed, hence n, and it's normally distributed with some mean, right? So population, for example, mu, and some standard deviation, sigma. So if you know the mean and the standard deviation, you've completely described a normal distribution. And so we will see those terms come back, and they'll come back particularly in, in the context of talking about when scores are extreme. In normally distributed data, we know that 68% of scores will occur between within one standard deviation, either above or below the mean. So although the mean might not describe everyone, everyone's really close. 70% of people are close to the mean. And therefore, it is a good overall measure of central tendency in this normally distributed data. 95% of scores are within plus or minus two standard deviations, right? And 99.7% of scores are within three standard deviations. So this is what's called the empirical rule. Basically, you can kind of commit this to memory that you know if a score is one standard deviation away, two standard deviations, three standard deviations, how likely those things are. So it's a useful thing that we can see visually on a normal distribution chart, right? So if you look at this, what you see is that from the mean to one standard deviation below the mean, you have 34% of scores. From the mean to one standard deviation above, you have 34% of scores. So collectively, within one standard deviation of the mean is 68% of scores, which is exactly what we said in the empirical rule. Notice just rounding. So 68% of scores are within one standard deviation. Now, if we move out to be two standard deviations from the mean, above and below, we've added in right? Another 27%, right? 13 and a half, essentially. When you double that, 27. Okay. We've added in 27%. So when you extend 27% on top of 68, this span, 95% of scores are in that space. So 95% of scores are within two standard deviations of that mean. And the really extreme scores, what if we go all the way out to three standard deviations. Well, you notice we add another 4%, 4.2%, right? We've rounded elsewhere, but this is where you're gonna end up with approximately 99.7% of scores within three. So notice there's almost nobody. You got 0.1 over here, 0.1 over here, so minus rounding error. There's only 0.2, of people who would lie outside of three standard deviations. So if we put some context on that, imagine you were thinking about height in human population. So imagine the average height is 66 inches and a standard deviation is three inches. So that would mean that 68% of humans have heights between 63 inches and 69 inches. I'm just making these numbers up, so they're probably not accurate. So if a standard deviation is three, then that would mean 95% of humans are between 60 inches and 72 inches. So that would mean 95% of people are between five foot and six foot. That's what that would mean. So then you'd have 57 inches, three standard deviations lower and 75 inches. So based on this, it would be very unlikely to find someone who was over six foot three, right? They would be statistic, statistically unlikely to occur. Not that they can't happen, but if you find someone that tall, you're going to be like, wow, you're really tall, right? Uh, and again, these are just guesstimates, so it's probably, probably
probably a little more variable than this, but just as an idea of how this works if we were to use inches. So hopefully that helps make sense of how standard deviation is both useful in that it's in the measure of the original. So it, it's measured in the same unit. So SD here we said was three. And when we say that SD is three, that means three inches, right? And then when we talk about those deviations, it also can let us know how likely a particular score might be in a normally distributed set of data. So we get something that's, you know, three standard deviations away. We're like, whoa, you are an extreme score. And that will be important to the decisions we make in statistics later. Hopefully that helps make a little sense of measures of dispersion.